What's going on everyone? Doc here and today I'm going to teach you how to become a tiger god. Tiger is a very complex character but when played to a high level she has a lot of utility and damage that can be helpful in a ton of content. She's also a ton of fun to play really well too. Before I explain how to become a tiger god though I'm going to tell you why you should want to become a tiger god and explain her benefits to you. So why become a tiger god? Tiger has two things that are really important in the game. First off, utility. She can stop opponents' buffs from triggering and avoid damage from difficult to dodge specials. In endgame content, just avoiding that chip damage from specials like Punisher 2099, that can be really, really big. Second, she has damage and quite a lot of it. Although you never see big yellow numbers from her, her damage hides in her burst physical damage. The numbers often get hidden behind all the ticking rupture buffs, but they are there and they do a surprisingly large amount of damage as you see here. Tigra has slowly become my favorite champion of 2020. Although 2020 has seen some great champions released like Cosmic Ghost Rider, Apocalypse, Red Guardian, Sorcerer Supreme, and even more, Tigra has a skill ceiling with a ton of potential. A skill ceiling is how much more a champion can do, the better you play them. Quake has a really high skill ceiling. The more advanced you become with Quake, the more nodes you can fight against. For example, without Perfect Quake, playing against Stun or Debuff Immune is difficult, but with it, it's super easy. Tiger's skill ceiling comes from two complex concepts, spacing and animation canceling. When you learn both, you help to avoid one of the biggest issues of Tiger's playstyle, failing to connect to heavy attack. I'll explain both concepts in more detail after I explain her basic abilities. Now that I've told you why to become a Tiger God, let's go to the basics so I can start explaining how to become a Tiger God. Tiger's basic combos are 7 hits, 2 hits in each medium attack. All of our hits inflict a neutralized passive on the opponent. While the opponent is under the effects of this neutralized, they have 100% reduced buff ability accuracy. This means not only buffs that trigger on the opponent, but also buffs that the opponent attempts to trigger on you. They're part of their buff ability accuracy. For example, against the Icarus node, Tigra won't gain any furies as long as it's from her hits while the opponent is neutralized. She'll still gain them for parries though while neutralized isn't up. Any opponent with a less than 100% chance to trigger a buff will fail. Opponents like the 626 champion boss can still trigger some buffs however due to their increased ability accuracy. When the opponent fails to trigger a buff, they receive a rupture debuff. Rupture debuffs are where most of Tiger's damage comes from. This can make her a lot weaker on debuff immune fights, however no champion yet is naturally immune to rupture. Tiger has two passive abilities her senses, Primal and Huntress. Each gives her separate effects and Tiger is most effective when she has both active. They last for 14 seconds when activated, which can be done either with Tiger's SP1 or SP3. Her special 3 will activate both, but her special 1 will only activate one at a time, always starting with her primal sense and then rotating to Huntress. Tiger's signature ability also allows her to start the fight with both senses active, up to 12 seconds at max sig. Neutralized is very important to keep active while her senses are up. While the opponent is neutralized, Tiger's sense durations are paused indefinitely. Her neutralized passive only lasts for 2.5 seconds, but refreshes on every hit. This means it's important to play Tiger aggressively to keep her senses active by keeping the opponent neutralized. Removing buffs with neutralized also helps, but the majority of fights you'll be using it to keep the senses active because of their large benefit. Her senses are where Tiger's real damage is. While Tiger's primal sense is active, whenever you inflict a rupture, you deal a burst of physical damage to the opponent. This damage is increased by 100% during special attacks. This ability really starts to deal some damage. During Tiger's specials, you won't specifically see the big numbers unless you have perfect eyesight, since the big number is red and often gets lost in all the ticking ruptures. Instead, you'll see some big chips come off the opponent's health. Tiger's Huntress Sense allows her to gain power quickly, leading to using more specials for her maximum damage rotation. While the sense is active, whenever the opponent is caused to miss, or you inflict a rupture, Tiger generates 10% of a bar of power. Tiger's Miss, for those of you unfamiliar with the Miss mechanic, it's similar to the Falter effect or Ghost's Phasing. Her Miss, however, only counters the opponent's non-contact special attacks, and while Huntress Sense is up, these attacks have a 10% chance to miss against her. Non-contact special attacks are pretty common and they're always the most difficult to dodge, stuff like beams and bullets that happen quite often. Imagine trying to perfectly dodge Punisher 2099's specials. 
the 10% chance from Huntress really isn't going to do much, but this is where Tiger's heavy attack comes in as the most important part of her kit. I'm going to be talking about it a lot in this video. While charging Tiger's heavy attack and for a short duration after launching, all non-contact hits have a 100% chance to miss Tiger. This is where that really helpful endgame utility comes in of avoiding this block damage. For every hit dodged this way, Tiger will generate 10% of a bar of power. This means every bullet in Cable's SP1 or Punisher's SP2. That's a lot of power gain. Additionally, when Tiger hits the opponent with her heavy attack after causing the opponent to miss, or she interrupts the opponent's attack with it, think maybe intercepting it or during the opponent's recovery animation, each hit of Tiger's heavy will inflict one of her ruptured debuffs. That was a lot of explanation, so I want to take a quick step back and show how her basic rotation actually breaks down in a fight. While both her senses are up, Tiger causes a special to miss and generates power. She then hits the opponent with her heavy, placing three ruptures, and generates even more power, 30% of a bar of power. Each rupture also deals a burst of physical damage because of her Huntress sense. Then, while the opponent is in the corner, you can use heavy again and chain them into the wall. This generates more ruptures if you catch the opponent trying to attack you, interrupting their attack, and it generates even more power because it generated more ruptures. Simple, right? Make ruptures to make power, use power to make more ruptures with our specials. As I mentioned before, the burst physical damage when inflicting a rupture is doubled during specials. Inflicting ruptures during special is easy. Whenever Tiger hits an unblockable strike, she inflicts a rupture. Tiger's SP1 and SP2 can both be unblockable if she becomes far enough away from the opponent at any point during them, including the beginning. This is indicated by a grayed out unblockable passive icon on Tiger, and the icon inside the circle will turn purple if Tiger has at least the minimum distance. This is the first way you'll see spacing be important at Tiger. Landing this unblockable strike on the opponent inflicts the first rupture. Using your specials can be similar to Ghost, just a single dash back before launching it can give you the distance needed to be unblockable. Tiger's special one doesn't do much in terms of damage comparatively. As I mentioned before, its main purpose is to activate the two senses if they become inactive at any point during the fight. It also has a very important purpose for the god tiger strategies I'll talk about later. Eventually, you will lose your senses during a fight, usually due to needing to be passive, baiting the AI, or various other reasons. Although the SP1 rotates which sense it activates, it's still the best option, as the two special ones cost less power than one special three. Tiger's SP2 brings the big damage. While still benefiting from the increased physical burst damage and other primal sense bonuses, the SP2 has a 10% chance on each hit to place a rupture, additional to any from the unblockable strike. This chance is increased by a flat 10% for every damaging debuff on the opponent, so with 9 ruptures you'll have a 100% chance to inflict a rupture on every hit of the SP2. Add in the burst physical damage, then the power gained from Huntress Sense, and after an SP2 not only will you deal a ton of damage, but you'll be over a bar of power towards your next SP2. Tiger Special 3, in addition to triggering both senses, will also trigger an indefinite rupture that gets reapplied with every unblockable strike. This means it acts as if instead of one rupture triggering, two trigger and they do more burst damage together every unblockable strike. Tiger's signature ability can help her deal damage faster. As I mentioned before, it allows you to start the fight with both senses so you can benefit from the sense passive abilities right away without needing to activate them with specials. Starting with the senses though stresses the importance of aggressive play with Tiger. The best thing you can do is always start the fight with a light attack. A medium is too slow, but most AIs will allow you to hit them with a light attack right away, and you can make the most out of your initial senses before needing to refresh them. Now I'm going to teach you guys the Tiger God strategies. One of the most important parts of knowing how to play Tiger is knowing the opponent. Both strategies are viable, but closing the gap, as I'll call it, is much better. It's about using spacing to capitalize on the opponent's specials. The other strategy, animation cancelling, is the backup that will work in every situation against every opponent. Closing the gap depends on the opponent's animations, so you'll need to know what you can do before actually doing it. This strategy, as I mentioned before, is about knowing spacing on the battlefield, the distance between you and the opponent. When I say closing the gap, I'm referring to how you are going to fix the spacing between you and your opponent so that it benefits you. Animation cancelling, like I said, is the backup. This gives you an alternate way to guarantee a hit on the opponent even if you can't close the gap. Both of these strategies are important to know so you don't end up in a situation where you're left still charging a heavy attack outside of range after the opponent used a special that you needed to use a heavy attack to miss. 
So that was all words, but now for some real gameplay and examples. First up is the concept of closing the gap, which I'll explain against Vulture and Heimdall. Both are great examples of difficult to heavy counter champions in Vulture's SP1 and Heimdall's SP2. Heimdall's SP2 can even be unblockable, so you really want to miss that with Tiger's Heavy. During both, there is a window where the attack isn't actually happening after your first dash back to evade the first contact hit. Tiger can't miss these non-contact hits, so you'll need to dash like normal. But once that hit has been evaded, now you need to close the distance. You can do this by throwing light attacks at the opponent, or in Heimdall's case, you have enough time to actually dash fully into him with a medium attack. You can do this against Void too, when there's a really large window of time. After these attacks that don't actually hit your opponent, you'll still end up closer to them. Now you can charge your heavy, and you'll be able to miss the next non-contact hit from the opponent, and then you can launch your heavy from the proper distance, and it will land correctly after the opponent's specials. This works on many different champions, but it really works best when the, when the champion has that short amount of time between the hits. But even if it doesn't work, the next strategy I'm going to teach you always works against all opponents, but you'll still need proper power management. Animation canceling is the practice of using a special attack while still in the animation of another attack. This has been a thing in MCOC for a while, and everyone does it without realizing it. Just dashing before your recovery animation finishes is, is animation canceling. In this case, you'll be using your special to cancel your heavy charge after the opponent has missed, but instead of releasing the heavy attack. With Tiger and her specials, especially due to the unblockable hits, this is a much more guaranteed hit on the opponent compared to her heavy attack. It works out really well for Tiger as long as you keep your Huntress Sense active for the duration of the miss on the opponent's specials. Against specials with a lot of hits, where the opponent is really going to distance themselves from you, this is a really important strategy. Against them, you won't need to start with lots of power, you'll gain a bar of power just from missing the hits. But this practice is still done best with proper power management, because if you don't have a bar of power, then you're still left with only heavy intercepting, which can be really difficult. An important thing to note about this strategy is that you can only launch your special once the opponent has finished their own special animation, including the recovery. Think about champions like Deadpool, who have a really long recovery on their special too. Special animations can never overlap. Last thing I want to do is show a little bit of gameplay, a mix of some more advanced stuff and some more basic stuff as well. Just to show that Tigra is kind of usable in pretty much every situation, especially if you use these Tigra God strategies that I've shown you here. So first off against Proxima, this was last month's event quest here. I'm going to have to refresh my senses because I lost them. So I'm getting those prowesses from stopping any buffs on Proxima, including the uh, Fury buff that she's trying to get here. So here I'm going to stop that unstoppable buff using her neutralize, which is really nice. You saw me use um, a couple of uh, close the gap strategies there. Right here I wanted to try not using it, see how well that did and didn't do too well. And absolutely what I should have done was use another SP1 before to refresh Huntress Sense, because it would have made my power gain faster, which is why the build up to the SP2 was a little bit slow there but still took Proxima down, no problem, and I used a little bit of closing the gap. This Doctor Strange fight is probably one of my favorite ones that I did. So first off, you notice I'm not gaining any power. This is on a power struggle, and uh, this Doctor Strange also has, oh, what's the name of it? It's um, Prey on the Weak. So every time I use up a buff, then I'm going to be uh, giving him power. So that's a really important node because once I kind of get to the rhythm here after kind of figuring out how I should fight this Doctor Strange, it's going to be really good. So you can see right there what happened was every every uh, unstoppable that I uh, triggered on my first special caused him to gain a little bit of power. And that's going to put me into this really good rhythm of baiting his specials. So one of the things you could do with Tiger, it's relatively risky, but it can work out really well against opponents that have specials that start off um, non-contact like Doctor Strange is physically baiting their specials by holding down heavy before they even start. I'm going to do it right here. The opponent thinks you're open. They don't know that you're going to miss the attacks, so you get to do just that and completely evade Doctor Strange's SP2 like this. Worked out really, really well, but you can see I did have, um, earlier in the fight, I did have some really good uh, timing and I was able to actually evade it like normal. Another uh, bait there. That's one of the issues though, sometimes you can kind of just slightly mess up there. I'm still holding a heavy attack, I don't, I just kind of, a uh, bit of a definitely risky way to play Tiger, but I definitely wanted to kind of show it off. 
but if you do have good um, good reaction time like there, you can just normally evade the SP2 or you can bait it. And I'm gonna do a little bit more baiting of his um, of non-contact specials against someone like Iron Man, Superior Iron Man actually, who is a really difficult to evade in heavy counter, just like a Cap Marvel that I showed uh, just a couple of minutes ago in the video. Uh, I'm just gonna be literally holding heavy and waiting for him to use his special. This is definitely best done if you, again, if you have a special to kind of uh, animation cancel, uh, but you can do it just normally like this and just completely bait him into using his special like I'm doing here. It works out really well against the Superior Iron Man. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's just another strategy. It's not one that I really recommend too often, but it's a really cool one to show off and to use quite often as well. Definitely the best and most important strategies for Tiger though is animation canceling and also closing the gap, which I've shown off quite often. Closing the gap, like I said, relies on kind of knowing the opponent's animations and kind of knowing which champions you can use that against. This is where I got that Deadpool clip trying to showing off how long his special two animation really is. Even though you can kind of cancel it by hitting him when he's trying to do the little dance, you can't throw a special while he's doing that. So you gotta watch out and wait for him to do that. SP2 here, and you can see just how much damage Tiger's SP2s really do. And really against someone like Deadpool, who you can heavy counter everything he throws, uh, it's a really good fight because I can stop every single buff that he is trying to get, especially his regen at the very end and Deadpool just becomes a complete non-issue in terms of regen, especially because I have all those rupture debuffs ticking down as well. So that is going to do it for this video. That is how to become a Tiger God. So I've been singing Tiger's praises this whole video, but I do want to talk a little bit about places where she doesn't do as well. Definitely debuff immune kind of hurts her damage a little bit because you can't place any rupture debuffs You're not really able to stack up the big physical damage that you're used to on her special too Also stun immune where you can't really get that first heavy attack off Or if you're not able to control your power like on power struggle. I showed off with dr. Strange a pretty good um, way of getting around that but that's not always the case, and she can kind of struggle there as well. However, in a lot of situations, Tiger really is good. And the main thing I wanted to show off in this video was it may rely a little bit on the opponent's animations, but with the right strategies, you can really get around them. I definitely don't recommend doing that special baiting with the heavy attack thing that I showed off against Doctor Strange and Superior Iron Man, but I wanted to include it in this video because it is a really interesting thing, and it did work out really well in those two fights so maybe you could find a good use for it as well in your strategies and kind of just add it to your repertoire and become an even better tiger player because that's what this video is how to become a tiger god so hopefully you enjoyed this video this is going to be my last video that looks exactly like this because after this video i'm going to be making some changes that'll look a little bit more like this look and listen to that it's gonna be a little bit weird getting used to but i got a ipad mini so i had to add a little bit of fancy uh stuff to the sidebars hopefully it looks good definitely let me know what you guys think on that in the comments so i've been working full time which is one of the reasons why i haven't uploaded in over a month now and i apologize about that um, but it's allowed me to afford getting this new device which has made playing the contest a ton better and all my videos for the foreseeable future are going to look more like this. I'll, I'll maybe uh, theme the sidebars to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing for every video. But streams and stuff are going to look pretty much exactly like this. And I'll be doing more of those in the coming weeks. More videos as well. But I'm going to wrap up this video here. Because I want to just leave it tiger-centric. And also make it so that if you're, not, if you're watching this video in six months, it's still relevant. So hopefully you enjoyed this video on how to become a tiger god. I think I covered all the pers all the strategies that I use personally, kind of all even the strategies that I'm just trying out now. So hopefully you guys find them useful and hopefully you found this video informative. Thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments on this video. What went what what worked for you? What, what might have not have? I know I added a lot of text at the beginning. And then I kind of went went less and less as the video went on. 
Uh, so maybe it was too much. Let me definitely let me know on that, just so I can kind of advance for the next uh, special guide, like Tiger, like my Man Thing guide, like my Quake guide as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.